to see each and every one of you. And, uh, man, I forgot all about the Cinco de Mayo deals, Rudy. <laughs> it's something that Jim simply is not in mind, but, yeah, yeah, a lot of people um, make a big deal out of that. And, 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 and it's funny when people actually say, oh, Mexican independence, not even that. Man. It's not even that. It's some battle that happened, on, you know, that don't, they don't even recognize it back in Mexico. That big a deal here, right? I, anyway, I kind of... Kind of, I, 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 I kind of always kind of make fun of people when they don't know their history. But anyway, we're blessed to be here today. And we are blessed here because God speaks to us. And if God is going to speak to us, it is because God loves us. And if we're going to be able to listen to God's word to, for us, it is because we are always, we are going to be ready to receive what God has for our lives. So again, I want to encourage you to always come with that desire, always come with that, with that understanding. Get, God will speak to us through God's word. The other thing that I want to say before we get into the message is that um, we want to um, uh, celebrate the, the, the returning of, of men's in God. We got several of our English speaking leaders there today uh, or there throughout the weekend. And uh, we're going we're gonna to have a blast this, this, this evening. You're welcome to come. Hey, we have learned through this series that God celebrates when someone becomes again come close to God. When someone is, uh, who was lost is now found. God celebrates in heaven with God's angels. Who are we not to celebrate it? Right? So I want to encourage you. I want to be, I want to encourage you. And if you can't come, you know, tune into Facebook, live Facebook. Put a like or something. You know, put a comment there or something. Hey, praise be to God or something. But let's celebrate that God continues to find the people who are lost. Can we say amen to that? Let's get into the word today. We want to get, we're going to conclude our message series that we, that we titled The Sheep, the Coin, and the Son, Unconditional Love. We're going to talk about this third story that we have in Scripture that Jesus was sharing to all these different kinds of people who were listening to them. And we're going to talk again about what about this God that loves us in a special, un, uh, you know, unconditional way. Um, and we find this story in the, in the Gospel of Luke, three of them in particular. The, uh, the story of the sheep, the story of the coin, and the story of the sun. In the first message, we saw the story of the sheep. The second last week, we were able to share the story of the coin. And now, let's get into the story of the sun. I want you to follow me. Please follow me on the reading. It's kind of long. But it's a very well uh, written story that God, in God's word, that God, that, that God wants us to understand. And, and that Jesus, again, the gospel is telling us he was sharing this with those who were hearing him. So after Jesus tells them of the story of the lost sheep, and then tells them a story of a lost coin, then Jesus continues with this third story. Let's, let's read it and follow me, please, with the, with the reading on your own, in, either in your bulletin or in the screen. It says, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there he squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country. And he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to feed to, to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating. But no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And I hear I am starving to death. I will sit out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants so he got up and went to his father but while he was was still a long way off his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him he ran to his son threw his arms around him and kissed him 
The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found. So they began to celebrate. Now I don't know if you were able to really get into the reading and really got yourself, let yourself uh, uh, be engaged in the story. And if you did, you, I, I'm pretty sure you were able to feel something in your spirit, in your heart. Because this is a story that Jesus is telling that even though it is something that didn't happen, it, ha it has to relate to us one way or another. It has to relate to our lives one way to another. Now, for us to understand this, let's recall three very important things one is that we're listening that that who were the people listening to these stories first they were people of of all kinds of sinners all kinds of people who are who had not very good reputation among among his community and then among them were also religious persons who thought them of themselves as being right with god and being holy the other thing that is important for us to recognize is that this again this is a parable it's a fictional story that Jesus uses as a way of bringing a teaching. A parable this didn't happen, but definitely it's something that is possible that it can happen. And number three is that those listening to these stories are very familiar with what the content of the parable. Now, the one thing though is that even though in this occasion the story doesn't, doesn't begin with a question like Jesus began the story of the lost sheep with a question and began the story of the lost coin with a question here it is a story that contains what is not too common to happen the common things around them the father the son what they had what 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 happened is, is what, what what the scenery is very common but what happened is not in fact it can be surprising and even scandalous like see the fact that the inheritance was given to the sons you know, uh, uh, while the father is still alive. This didn't happen. The sons would receive the inheritance after father, the father had died. The other thing that happens in this, in this uh, story that is, uh, out of, out of, uh, uh, that is not common and it's, and it's scandalous even, is that the son would ask for his part in, of the inheritance and, and, and that could be seen or, or, or felt as something offensive or disrespectful. To ask for his inheritance while the father is still alive. And the other thing that is surprising, uncommon, and even scandalous is that the son with the inheritance, an inheritance son, a son that has inheritance, is someone that ends up and finds himself wanting to eat with the pigs. See, it is rec easy for us to recognize that in this story, who represents who? The father represents God. The older son represents all of, all of those who, who think they have not never left the father, have not been with the father. And the younger son represents the people who leave God, the people who find themselves then lost. In this story, the youngest son he's, is who, the, who becomes lost. Like in the first two stories, it was the lost sheep, it was the lost coin, and here we are looking at a lost son. Now let me take you for us to recognize steps towards the downfall of the lost. And here we need to, under, I would like to, for us to be able to recognize how this can relate to us very easily. First, we read, Father, give me my share of the estate. What does this represent? It represents that this is a desire to live his or her life or her own life without being accountable to no one. Now, how can we relate to that? Everybody here has been in their teenagers, teen, in their teen years. In fact, we got some teenagers among us right now. In fact, there's some old people right now that still think they're teenagers. In fact, there's some people right now that really can really 
relate to this. What? A desire to live your own life without being accountable to no one. That's what happens when we're teenagers, right? You're tired to, to, to have to ask your mom or dad for permission to do something. You just had it sometimes when you need to give an account to your mom or your dad of what you did. <laughs> okay? When, when we're young, we're like, man, I wish my dad and mom would just get off my back. Hello? And if you're like, say, if you're, if you're a parent right now, you're like, yes, pastor, preach it. But well, how about when you were a young person? Hello? Are we here? Come on. Doesn't this relate to us? In fact, can I tell you something? As Christians, sometimes we want to live our Christian life without being accountable to anybody. We want to live our own Christian ways, right? We, I don't want to be. I don't want to be. I don't want to be telling anybody why I didn't come to church. I don't want to be telling. I don't want to be. I don't want to be telling anybody why I didn't come to serve this time. You know. You know. Mind your own business. Hello. The other thing we read is that God together all he had and set off for a distant country. Distant country. What does this represent? The desire to live far away from, li from a life of service to anyone. Far away from serving anyone. Why can we say this? Because the son lived a life of service to his father. How do we know that? When we read the second half of the story. This is actually a second half of the story, okay? Oh, yeah, Pastor. Oh, are we going to look at that next week? No. Why? Because it's mother's fault. We all celebrate mothers. And for the Mexican moms, it starts on Friday. God help us. So yeah, there's a second part of the story, and it's awesome, the kind of teaching we got, but it's mother's fault, we can't do it next week. All right? But in the second half of the story, we recognize that these two sons lived the life of serving their father. This son wants to go far from that, far from that. He no longer wants to hear about what he has to do now. He no longer wants to be serving his father. He wants to live on his own. See, this is again a desire to, be, to live far away from the life of service to anyone. If you ever, as a Christian, as a servant of God, find yourself thinking that you no longer want to serve God, you are on your way, to, uh, you are on a step towards the downfall of being lost. Can we be true here? Come on. Can we be straight straightforward? Come on. Oh, do you want me to bush, beat around the bush and just say, this just happens to people that don't know Jesus? Come on. We're talking about a son here. If you ever find yourselves ever thinking about, you know, I'm done serving. I've already done it for so long. You know, I don't, I don't you know, I, 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 I find myself, you know, I don't want to serve anymore. I don't want to go to church and not worry about serving anybody. The son wanted to get away from that. The other thing we read, and again, again, we're, 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 we're looking at steps towards the downfall of the lost. The third thing is that we read is that he squandered his wealth in wild living. What does this represent? This is to live a life in total disregard of all spiritual disciplines, not honoring God at all. He lived his life in, he squandered, I'm sorry, his wealth in wild living. <laughs> can, you, can you think about this? A young dude with a lot of money. A young dude that doesn't want to be accountable to dad with a lot of money. A young guy that wants to just experience and have the, the, the time of his life in a distant country. Nobody knows him, but he's got a lot of money. See the scenery we, just, we, we read in the, in the introduction of the passage? You, see, you, you remember those pictures? 
it's cool, it's cool, right? It's time. It, it got us hooked on, right? But I would have liked to see a different one. Because in the scene, we, 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 we kind of we see a dad, we kind of see a father, not too well off. This father was very well off. The scenery should have been this big old house with a lot of workers, with a lot of servants, with a lot of slaves, okay, with a lot of, with, 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 with a lot of animals. This, the guy should have come out and should have seen his, well, the, his son coming back. He, he, we, we should have seen this guy who was really well off. Why do we say that? Because we just read it. The guy says, hey, put the best clothes on, put a ring on his finger, and, and kill the most fattened calf. This means that this guy had a lot of money, which means that the inheritance of this, of this young man was a lot of money, which means that even though the story doesn't say it, doesn't specify it, it a lot of years could have gone by while squandering everything he had. A lot of years, Okay. And, he, we, and again, he says, he, he squandered everything he had. And this is this living in disregard to all spiritual discipline. See, if we find ourselves one time, okay, disregarding our daily prayer, our daily reading of the Bible, our coming to church, our going to our small groups, okay? If we disregard all those spiritual disciplines that we have uh, understood that we need to be doing as sons and daughters of God, as people who want to maintain that relationship with God, if we, if we, if we disregard all of that, hey, we're going to be finding ourselves living some wild things. And this is not in a good sense. Because when we stop feeding our spirit, when we all of a sudden stop praying, we all of a sudden stop reading scripture, when we all of a sudden stop coming to church, you know, now and then, because we're so busy with doing something else, we're so busy with work, we're so busy trying to pay the bills, we're so busy trying to accomplish some worldly things in this life, which is not all bad, which is not at all sometimes wrong, it becomes when you, when you replace all of those things that you have to do with prayer, with reading the Bible, with attending church, and serving God. That's when it becomes a trouble. That's when you start your way unto the downfall to finding yourself lost. See, there's a God that loves us. Come on. There's a God that loves us. And the God that loves us is going, is going to talk to us. A God is going to speak to our heart. Come on. God is going to speak to our heart. May God speak to our heart today. We also read he began to be in need he began to be in need sooner or later needs arise that prevent the well-being and living in dignity it will happen go on. it will happen anybody here is ready to tell me that they're ready to control the economy the story said famine hit that hit that land A everybody here understands that something can happen that's out of our control. Oh, Pastor, you're wishing us bad now? No, I don't need to do that. That happens. We're, we're, we're living in this world. Come on. Things are going to happen. Things are going to arise. And we find ourselves in need sometimes. Man, how much better do we need to find ourselves? If we find ourselves in need because of the things that happen in this world, how much better are we going to be off if we're in the Father's house? But we find ourselves lost in those times of need. Whoo! What happens? What happens? We read he longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating. What does this represent? Such person finds him or herself being and doing the lowest of lows in life which never before had been exposed to. Young guys, young gals, you have never been exposed, most probably, to how low a human being can actually get to. Maybe some of the older people have experienced something in their lives that thought that that was the lowest of lows that they can reach as a human being. See, let me explain to you. Pigs may not be such something such as bad to us, right? We think, we think of pigs, you know, we think of bacon, right? And if we're Mexican, we think of pigs, we think of carnitas, chicharrones, asientos, right? Cueritos. 
even the, even the even if cuerito still have hairs in it. That's why for my tosti locos, it's no cueritos, please. I don't like those hairs coming out of it. It may not seem as bad to us, but let me tell you, for Jews, the pigs are filthy animals. For Jews, they don't want anything to do with pigs, okay? Pigs are filthy animals that they obviously don't eat at all, but they shouldn't even be close to pigs. For a story to contain, for a bunch of Jews listening to that, for a story to contain that this one son, son of a wealthy person, this son, okay, finds himself not just taking care of pigs, but wanting to eat what the pigs ate was the lowest of lows. Do we understand here? This son was never exposed to that. But he finds himself exposed to something that is the lowest of lows. Let me tell all these young people right here, right now. You want to do that? You want to experience the lowest of lows in life? You got no idea. Let me tell you again, you got no idea. There's some young people that have idea because they've tasted some lows in life. Not because of what they've been through, but what their parents have been through. But if you're, if you're there thinking about, man, I can't wait until I get out of home and I can do whatever I want. You, you, you're in danger. You're in danger. If you're thinking this way. Because they experience the lowest of lows in life is not something to be laughing about. And it's not something to just disregard in your life. This son was never exposed to that. He was daddy's boy. And you know what? A lot of your parents have gone through so much crap in this life that they know exactly what you should avoid. But then again, it's just mom and dad getting on our back, right? No. It's the unconditional love of God that God loves you so much. It speaks to our hearts and says, son, daughter, you don't need to go through this. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods the pigs were eating. And the other thing we just read, no one gave him anything. No one gave him anything. Let's picture this. A young dude, probably well-looking, like some of us. Distant land, bunch of money. Do you think he had some friends around him? Come on. You think he had some friends around him? Yeah. It's funny, right? It's funny. When people have money, they got a lot of friends. Ain't that funny? When, 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 when women are very popular, they got a lot of friends around them. Ain't that funny? May not be funny to women, but it's funny for us men. Okay, listen. Here, we see something very important. What happened to all those friends he had when he had money? It says, no one gave him anything. You think you got some friends out there? Hey, you may have some friends out there, man. If they don't want nothing to do with God, they don't want nothing to do with church, they don't, really, they don't really care for the kind of lifestyle you go because you go to church every Sunday maybe or because you, you're starting to get involved about church, you know. You may have some friends out there, but guess what? Those friends who don't fear God, that, doesn't have the, that, that don't have the understanding of God, they're not in God. They don't know this is a distant country. No, they don't know that father. They don't know what's up. The only thing that we know from the story that we can, re, we, can, we can collect from is that the story tells us that no one gave him anything. You know, could you imagine how much he gave when he had a lot of money to all his friends? Don't expect friends to come to the rescue when you find yourself in a dilemma in this life. 
But we need to expect, we need to know that there's a loving God that will always bring us through. Amen. That will always bring us through. Some might say, well, Pastor, I, I know some Christian brothers and sisters that I didn't get any help from. Well, you want to do the same? No. No, 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 no. We understand that God is the one who brings us to the, to brings rescue to our lives. Don't expect it to come from any friends that don't know God. When we read this, when we read this story, we find a decisive moment, a decisive point in this story. We read this. He came to his senses. He came to his senses. When did this guy came to his senses? Another, another way of translating the original Greek is he got himself thinking. <laughs> In a, another way, he, he, he actually recognized what was going on. See, it takes us to sit down and really think about what's going on when we find ourselves in the lowest of lows. See, we don't need to find ourselves to the lowest of lows to us to think, to understand, to come to our senses. Hey, parents, have you ever th thought about your kids? Why doesn't he come to his senses? Because we as parents don't think that our, that our children don't think. Sometimes they don't. But they're capable of thinking. Come on. Sometimes we find ourselves not thinking. And when we don't come to our senses, we continue to do whatever. See, we, we don't know. The story doesn't tell us how long, how long he was lost. It could have been years. He had a very well-to-do father. This son, hear, hear me out, come on, hear me out. This son, inheritance wasn't no $20 bill. It may have taken years for him to squander everything he had. This is a well-to-do guy. He had an inheritance. When he received it, it was, it, was, it, was a, it, it was not insignificant. It wasn't just a piggy bank. And guess what? Well, sometimes we find ourselves time going by, and we think we're okay because nothing has happened even though time has gone by. But sooner or later, we find ourselves coming to our senses. See, it takes a coming to our senses to start thinking right. The guy said, how can this be? See, he began to think. He began to come to it. How can it be that my father's workers have plenty of food to spare and I am here dying of hunger? Can we sometimes recognize that we find ourselves in a situation in which we say, hey, you know what? I'm a son. I'm a daughter of God. Why, why am I in this predicament? Why, why am I in this trouble right now? What, 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 what got me down there? What, what's going on? Come. He came to his sense. See, this is only when a person really thinks... It comes to his or her sense when there is a truly and genuine repentance. See, the hope of this rests on God knowing the truly and genuine repentance because it has, it has been thought of. There was coming to one's senses. See, there after this, then after this, when someone comes to his senses, when the son came to his senses, then the journey back to God begins and culminates with God's unconditional love manifested in a surprising, not at all common way. In fact, in a scandalous way. Now, the word scandalous may take, may, may, we may hear it as a negative, in a negative tone. But here, scandalous means, I'm trying to say is that it is surprising. It is amazing. It is about, it is about actually ready to, it's, it's actually about seeing God's love. And someone going, wow, what? Really? Truly OMG. Because this wasn't, this, this is, a, this, 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 this may not seem right. Let, let's, let's, let's see this. The road 
towards, experience the unconditional and scandalous love is this. Now, before we get into this, anybody here interested in having God's unconditional, scandalous love manifested in your life? Come on. Anybody here interested in saying, you know what? I want God's love manifested in my life. Because there's one thing for us to know about God's love. There's one thing for us to believe in God's love. It's one thing for us to understand what God, how God loves us. And another thing is to experience that love. It's another thing for us to be manifested in our life, for we be able to see it. First, coming to our senses takes us to recognize the state of living. Coming to our senses, it, it takes us to recognize the state of living. We read this in verse 17. We recognize Hey, how are we living here, man? What's what's going on? Hey, what am I doing? What am I doing? Second, recognizing and accepting fault and sin. <laughs> Sometimes this is hard. Let me tell. Let me let me re reframe that. Sometimes it always hard to do. What to admit we're wrong. To admit. Do accept, we got some fault. Come on, okay, are you with me? Or I'm not the only one that it's hard for me to do. Because not too long ago, in fact, some days ago, in fact, in this same week, I got my wife looking at me. I find myself, my wife looking at me, see me in the eyes and says, what's wrong with you? Stop me in my tracks. And stop me in my tracks and I said, whoa, there's some power coming out of that woman right now. <laughs> I'm serious. My wife told me, what's wrong with you right now? And you know what? That was the start of the day. And I had in my mind so many things, so many things are going on. And you know what? I, didn't, I, I was not recognizing that I didn't have a good attitude. That I was speaking to her in, in, in a tone that was not nice. We don't do any yelling in our home. We don't do any throwing around in our home. We, 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 we just don't. We learned that a long time ago. Okay? I don't, we don't yell. We don't, we don't scream at each other. But my wife was recognizing that I was speaking to her in a not very nice tone. And when she told me, she said, what? she said, what's wrong with you? Stopped me in my tracks, looked at her, looked down, didn't say anything. You know why? Because it's hard for us to admit fault. And I know I'm the only one here that's very hard for me to do that. And anybody else here is re really ready to admit fault, right? And I said, I didn't say anything. I just retracted and it began to understand, hey, you know what? I'm not, I'm, I don't have a very good attitude and I'm, and I'm showing it to my wife right now. It's hard for us to do that. But guess what? Steps towards God's unconditional and scandalous love being manifested in our life is something that we need to do. Let's admit when we are wrong. This son said, I'm going to tell my dad, Dad, I was wrong. I committed sin against you in heaven. Dad, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. See, the second, the third thing is recognition, recognition that there's no worthiness of being, in, of being and having. There's no worthiness. People... We need to always, every day, recognize that we're not worthy that we have what we have. Come on. We're not worthy. You know, this is something we need to do every day. And I do that every day. I'm, a, I'm sharing with you a little bit of my life here. And you know, I, every day, man, who am I? Who, who am I? I don't deserve. I, and I start looking at all the things that I have around me that it's a blessing to my life. One of those things says, God, I don't deserve, well, who, who am I for me to still have my both parents after their 80s, in their 80s, in, in, they're, they're elderly people, and I still have the, the blessing of still having my parents with me, with us, with, my, with me and my sister and everybody that love them. 
I don't deserve having the family. I, I don't deserve the job that I have. I don't deserve the home that I have. I don't deserve what I have. Any, every time we need to recognize we don't deserve what we have. Be, if we have it, it is because of the love of God. Come on. The, the, the time, the time. Listen, when we begin, okay, when we begin reclaiming the things that we should have, when we begin to start saying, to start being angry that we don't have what we understand we should have, when we start demanding what we should have, we are on our way to finding ourselves being lost in this life. I'm talking about the people that, are, that, that have a life of fearing God, of honoring God. If we're sons and daughters of God and we find ourselves complaining about what we should have, that's the time we've been forget, we're forgetting everything we shouldn't have and we have it. The third thing is that recognition that there is no worthiness of being and, and, and having. We find ourselves, we've, we read this in verse 19. The fourth thing, letter D, is, is taking action towards going back to where we belong. We need to take an action towards that. This is an action to be taken. It's, a, it's, not, it's not, just, not just sitting where you're at. And it's not, it's not just, just letting yourself be where you're at. No, there's an action to be taken. There's, there's an action. The son said, I'm going to go back to my father. I'm going to go back to my father. He didn't sit there and just, and just wait to see if the father finally finds him. He could have been dead by the time father do, does that. No, it takes an action. I go back to where, I'm, I'm, where I belong. Where do you belong? If you're a son and daughter of God, where do you belong? Come on. Where do you belong? There's places. There's moments. There's atmospheres. There's, there's, pla- there, there's, there's an environments that we do not belong as sons and daughters of God. We don't belong. Okay? And praise be to God when someone here may experience finding themselves in an environment in which they feel weird, in which they say, you know what, there's something not right here. I don't belong in here. That doesn't happen until we come to our senses. But we take an action of saying, you know what, I got to get away from this. I got to go back to where I belong to. Who do you belong to? Come on. Who do you belong to? Can we say it? Who do you belong to? See, there's a God that gave his life, this gave his son on the cross for him to be able to pay for your salvation. It's called, it's the blood of Jesus that was, that was, that was poured out, uh, on the cross for us. You know, and it took uh, God pain, you know, pain for our freedom, pain for our salvation. God bought us in the moment in which we surrendered our life to Jesus that's the moment in which that price that had been paid came to account for you you are bought you belong to God if you can raise your hand today and say I belong to God then there is moments there is environments and there's actions in which you as someone who belongs to God don't belong you just don't and you find yourself there, you need to, you, you're going to feel uncomfortable. You may find your friends around you going, aren't we having a great time? Isn't this fun? And you might be going, yeah, yeah, this is awesome, man. This is great. Oh, man, I'm having a time of my life. But deep down inside of you, you're saying, I don't belong here. Now, if you find yourself in such an environment and nothing goes on, you're pretty good. You're like, yeah, man, this is it. This is life. Then I want you to really come to your senses and really think do I really belong to God because when we surrender our life to Jesus something happens in our lives it calls it, it's called born again and another thing happens the Holy Spirit begins to live inside of our lives and that's what the Holy Spirit is the one that bugs us when we find ourselves in an environment that we don't belong So if you're okay just being in anywhere, I want to invite you. We need to belong to God. We need to belong to Jesus. See, the other thing is that letter E, God's compassion is experienced in a re-encounter with God. God's compassion is experienced when we re-encounter God. You know, we we just heard about the re-encounter retreats that's going on right now. That's going to happen right now. 
You know, and, and we, should, we should be all ready to serve. Or, or, or if you haven't gone to re-encounter, you should be saying, I'm there. You shouldn't be thinking about, oh, I don't know. I don't know how I've got time. I don't know if I'm going to have any money. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I don't know if I'm going to make it. No, 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 no. Come on. Do you think God wants to have a re-encounter with you? Come on. Do you think God is looking forward for a re-encounter with your life? Come on. Do you understand this? Then if you think that God really wants that, then guess what? God will provide. God's compassion. Again, that scenery is about this, this, this kind of humble man going and find the scenery we just we, we saw, you know, as, as an illustration. This humble guy. No, no, he must, he should have this, these, these, these expensive robes, man, this, the beautiful robes, going and hugging this, this dirty, smelly, pig smelly, ripped clothes, no sandals on his feet. You know, a stinking person, he didn't care. It was his son, he was going to hug him. He didn't wait until he arrived, he went to hug him. This is, this is someone, this is, this is experiencing, okay, in re-encounter, experiencing the compassion of God. See, this man in the story didn't care about getting all smellied up. He didn't care about getting all dirtied up. That was his son. He didn't wait for him to say, okay, I'm going to wait to see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to act like I didn't know he was coming. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait until he, he enters the door. I'm gonna start doing something and, and I'm going to see him I'm going to he, he, see his face when he comes in and, and, and really admits to me that he was wrong no 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 he, he, he's not that kind of a father that's, that's saying okay I'm going to wait until he comes see if he makes it and then I'm going to tell him what I tell you what I tell you what I tell you how many here praise God that we don't have a God like that how many here gives the God the glory that we don't have a God like that see the, the, the story says that he ran towards his son he ran towards his son, man. This is something that should bring tears to our eyes. He ran towards his son. He didn't care how he came. He didn't care what happened. He ran to him, hugged him, and kissed him. That's experiencing God's compassion. Can I ask you right now something? Are you interested in experiencing God's compassion? God runs to you even before we ever get to God. Isn't this awesome? Isn't this an awesome God? Come on, not all the people have a very mis misconception of who God is. They think about God as this, this old beard, white-haired, weird man up in the sky, ready to scold, ready to, to, to come down hard on those sinners, on those, on those ugly, you know, no good sinners. No, God is a God that has scandalous love for us. People hearing this and go, what? The, the, the father ran to deceive this guy? This guy should have been, this guy should have been in jail. This guy should have been, should have been scolded. This guy should, this, the father should tell this guy that, that, you know, he needs to work for him seven years before he ever earns anything that anybody had in that household. That's scandalous. That's that F. God's scandalous love is manifested in God's sons and daughters. Verse 22 to 24. See, the unconditional love is scandalous because the genuine repentance that brings God's forgiveness and God's forgiveness is amazing. See, the son who understood he was no longer worthy to become son, worthy to be called son, the father tells his servants to place three very significant things on him. First, it didn't come first on the reading, but we're going to see it first here. Sandals on his feet. See, only those who were slaves in those times were barefooted. Sandals on the feet indicated socially that that person was a free person. <laughs> see, even when, you've been, even when you in the past has been a slave... Someone who has been bound, okay, to any kind of things that you would obey to. 
you may have been have found yourself bound okay to addiction bound to some unhealthy love situation bound to some to to to, to those to those anger feelings and, and 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 bound to things that you think you can't get away from when even when you fi- have found yourself to be bound to to a life of, of you know of of of, of anger and of and, and 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 of unforgiveness even when you found found yourself bound to doing things you thought that you were destined to do in Jesus in God you're free come on you are free you are free you don't need to no longer you don't need to no longer be be taking orders from anything in your life you are a free person free person Man, I don't know if you're if you're excited as me, but I'm sure I am because this is awesome. This is awesome. This is awesome. The father said, "Put on the best robe." You know what that means? This is a special clothing on the son of a patriarch. Remember the story of Jacob. Remember how he felt that his son Joseph, who was, who was going to be representing, who was going to, you know, he gave him his special this special gown of colors, a multicolored. Remember that? See, that was a custom in those days. That was a custom in that in 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 that. Um, the culture. See, the son of the uh, of, of the main per- the son of the boss. Okay, wore this special gown. All right, when people saw this special gown, they said, "Who? That's the son of the boss. That's the son. You better be good to him. All right, you better you watch out. That's the son of the of the main dude here. All right, you better you understand what I'm talking about here. See, he didn't care. He said, "Bring the sandals. He's no longer." He's no longer a lost person. He's no longer bound to anything. He's free. Hey, bring that robe. That is someone important in this household. And the third thing is put a ring on his finger. You know what a ring on his finger meant? It meant he had authority. He meant he had authority. That's what it meant in those days, man. See, God, no matter where you come from, no matter where how lowest of lows you may have found yourself in the past, when you come to God, God is going to put some sandals on your feet. That means you're going to be free. That means you're going to be free. That means you're going to be free. That means you don't bound. You're not bound to anything. You're not bound to anybody. You're not bound to nothing, and you're not bound to no one. Well, the other thing God is going to do is going to put a robe in your on you, which means that you're going to be distinguished among people that you are a daughter or a son of the of the of the main dude around this block you understand what i'm talking about here that means you are you you are you you are distinctively known in other words that doesn't mean that we wear certain robes all black and everything whatever we, we we wear some weird weird clothing no that's not what it means it means how we conduct ourselves it means how we speak it means how we conduct ourselves among people it means how we we're able to 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 relate what god is in our life see that means that somebody's going to come across you say here there's something special about you there's something you're you're not you're not just anybody here you know you're somebody you know you're somebody in in amongst community amongst the people amongst amongst people you're you're somebody see you 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 uh people recognize that you're somebody the way you talk the way you conduct yourselves the way you 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 you, uh you uh you go around with people and and you deal with people and you talk with people there's something that that distinguishes you and it puts a ring on you that means it gives you spiritual authority anybody here is interested in having spiritual authority in your life come on what does that mean pastor it means that somebody can be so amazed at what happened with you man I remember with you I remember what you were doing I remember when you, who you are man you were <laughs> I don't know, man. You, they, people called you the the the, the, the devil, man. You were, you, you you were so bad. I mean, you were so bad. And, and but I, I hear that now you like going to church and things like that. You know, and I got a big old cramp right now. It doesn't let me go. Can you pray for me, dude? And you have authority, spiritual authority, man. And you put your hands on that person and say, "Yeah, man, let me pray for you." But I remember you though, man. You were, you were bad, man. You were. I mean, people was just. People were afraid of you, but you you will you will pray for me. Yeah, man, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, I declare healing in the body of my friend right now. And Jesus, because you were whipped on before the cross, we are healed. And in the name of Jesus, I pray that my brother right here is now healed from that crap that's going on in his stomach right in the name of Jesus. And then that dude is gonna go like, whoa, man. I felt something turning in my stomach right now. Dude, 
with that cramped gone. What in the world? Man, you were so bad. Now you're praying for me and and I don't want, and I don't feel it now anymore. Anybody here is interested in having spiritual authority? No matter how low of lows you've been in your life, no matter how dirty you have been able, you you have been exposed to in your life. No matter if you ever have find yourself to the lowest of lows doing things that you have never thought you were going to get to. If you come to your senses and if you have repented and you want to go back home, there's a God. There's a scandalous love to be ready to be manifested in your life. See, God knows when there's repentance. God knows when there's a genuine desire in your heart to come back. That knows when you have already known, you've already said, you know what, I was wrong. God knows it, and God is going to receive you with open arms, get you some sandals on your feet, put the best robe on you, and put a finger on your feet, put a, put a, put a ring on your, on, your, on your finger, and see that you have somebody that is again son and daughter of God. See, when there is true coming to other senses, the genuine repentance, there will be an action towards God that makes unconditional scandalous love of God manifests into person in the following ways. Number one, the person is no longer a slave to nothing and no one. I'm going to say praise God for that. Number two, such person is recognized as the servant of the Lord. Somebody said, hey, hey, you know what, you, you, who, you, who you are, you don't need no title, you don't need to be leader of something, you don't need to be called, you know, he's the director of something, you don't need any titles, all you got to do is just serve God. And somebody's going to say, he or she serves the living God, serves the Lord. Number three, gets to have spiritual authority. That means you're ready to pray for somebody. That means you're ready to do a, a, make a difference in people's lives. You're ready to tell any evil spirit in the name of Jesus, we rebuke you and I cast you out in the name of Jesus. That's spiritual authority. If you find yourselves having an environment in your home that everybody's got a bad attitude, if you find yourselves in, in finding in your, in, your, in, your, in your workplace with somebody just is getting on your nerves, man, and just, you, don't need, you don't know anything, you came really happy and something's going on down here. You know what spiritual authority means? That means you go out, you go out to a car, you go out to a break room, and you start praying. You start saying, in the name of Jesus, any evil spirit that's causing the invited at my home that have a bad attitude, in the name of Jesus, out. I cast you out. Be gone in the name of Jesus. And you know what? You come back to that environment, everything calmed down. That means spiritual authority. See, no matter where you come from, no matter how low you've been in your life, God is ready to receive you back. And God is ready to let you know right now. Let's lift the red flag on when you start thinking about living home. Finding yourself away from where you belong. You don't need to do that. Can I tell you something? You can find yourself having the most loved person in your life leading you away from home. That's why Jesus said, if you are not ready to leave parents, sons, daughters, wives, husbands, if you're not ready to leave them for me, he ain't worthy of me. Where do you belong? Come on, where do you belong? There's a loving God that loves us so much, no matter how we messed up. God is always going to receive us back. Yet the unconditional, scandalous love of God be manifested in your life. This is the next step. And I prayer is that today somebody here takes this next step. I will be willing to do my part so that the unconditional love of God be manifested in my life. And being manifested in your life means you no longer are a slave to anything you're not bound to anyone you are recognized servant of the Lord and you become a servant of God with spiritual authority can I ask you if you can close your eyes and bow your heads please everybody can we do that today And I want to ask you with your eyes closed and your head bowed.
As we listen to this one worship song again, and many of you sang it at the beginning of the service, and many of you didn't because you weren't here yet. But once the Holy Spirit of God and God's presence comes to your heart through this song, once you connect your spirit, once you feel something in the most deep part of your spirit, then I would ask you if you can be on your feet. Don't, don't stand up if nothing, if, nothing, if nothing touches you in the spirit. Don't stand up. You can, you can, you can still be seated and, and may God bless you and may we continue to see you in God's house so if God continue to speak to our hearts. But today, once you feel something in your spirit, once something hits you right in the square middle of your being through this worship song, because God is here, then you be on your feet. Don't stand if everybody else stands. Just stand if you are touched. And you know what? If you need prayer, if you need to feel God's arms around you, it don't matter what happened in your life. No matter who you have been, who you were, no matter how low of lows you may have fallen in the past, God loves you. God loves you. 